so and this is the second module and we'll be starting with the structural geology now structural geology has uh, four distinct parts and it's a very long module the first one is folds second faults then third joints and last one unconformity we'll be studying all of them in details and uh, before going into the folds part we'll be learning some basic terminologies which are required so first one is outcrop what does outcrop mean the rock which is exposed on the surface of the earth is called as an outcrop this is let's say this is soil and uh, the rock is not only on the top of the soil but it, it is also underneath the soil right so the rock which is exposed outside that would be called as outcrop and the rock inside is uh, different okay so this is called as an outcrop for example you can see these rocks how they are actually they are inside also but some part is exposed out then you can see this kind bedding the second terminology bedding the layers of the sedimentary rocks are called as beds so these layers you see how they are there on the rock so each of the layer is will be called as a bed and we have seen how the sedimentary rocks are formed they are deposited layer by layer that is first layer it is deposited then the next layer is deposited over that and the third layer as well so this is how the beds are formed dip and strike very very important uh, terminology dip and strike and uh, let us say that there is a uh, there is a rock here and i am cutting a plane okay this plane is cutting through the rock fine so the dip will be the angle that the beds of the rock are making with that horizontal plane this is a horizontal plane horizontal plane and dip will be the direction the angle that the beds of that rock are making with the horizontal plane this is about dip what about strike strike is whatever the whatever it is cutting that horizontal plane is cutting the rock that is called as strike and dip and strike are perpendicular to each other okay so dip will be the direction like this and it is the angle that the bedding are making with the horizontal plane imaginary horizontal plane and whatever wherever that horizontal plane is cutting the rock that direction that horizontal direction will be called as strike <coughs> and strike will be perpendicular to dip dip and strike now strike refers to the direction in which geological structure is present the strike direction may be defined as the direction of the trace of the intersection between the bedding planes so this is what is shown in this diagram also the horizontal surface uh, which is represented here that i had shown previously as a horizontal plane and this is that uh, rock which is inclined these are the beds of that rock and you can see that the dip direction is this way the dip direction is basically the direction along which the sedimentary uh, beds or, or these beds of the sedimentary rock are dipping it's it's very simple and uh, straightforward the dip direction means nothing but the direction in which the beds of the sedimentary rock are dipping and the angle dip angle will be the angle between the dip direction and the horizontal plane so this you can see here this is the dip angle and the strike is the one which is cutting this rock this this uh, with this horizontal surface of water acting as a imaginary horizontal plane wherever it will be cutting your rock that is called as the strike and what is strike angle now if you see this from top view i'll just try to draw here obviously it won't be accurate but i'll just try to draw let's say that from top view this is that horizontal surface of water and 
this is the rock okay some of course here it is uh, let us say some some arbitrary shape so this is the strike this interface will be the strike and uh, this is the strike direction strike direction and assume that our north the north of this region when we see uh, when we are seeing this from the top there will be a north direction as well correct assume that our uh, north is somewhere like this this is the north so whatever angle this north whatever angle that north will be making with your strike direction that will be called as strike angle this you will learn more better when we do the practicals of this geology in that we have drawing of maps uh, obviously that will come in the next semester not in this semester yeah so this is the strike angle the strike direction the dip angle and the dip direction moving ahead dip dip literally means slope or inclination in structural geology dip is expressed both as direction and amount the dip direction is the direction along which the inclination of the bedding plane occurs as i told you that in whatever direction the bedding planes are getting bedding planes are inclined inclined downwards basically that direct that will be the dip direction and the amount will be the angle that it will make with the horizontal uh, plane true dip now this dip is again divided into two two parts first is called as a true dip the second will be called as an apparent dip both are very important true dip if the inclination is measured for a dip direction which is perpendicular to the strike only then it is called as true dip now let us say that this is that horizontal plane imaginary horizontal plane which is cutting your rock and this is the strike direction you see wherever it is intersecting the rock that is the line of strike now if i take a dip direction perpendicular to the line of side uh, perpendicular to the line of strike then that dip direction will be called as a true dip if i take dip direction in any other angle other than 90 degrees that will be called as an apparent dip so a true dip will always be perpendicular to the line of strike apparent dip when the dip direction is not perpendicular to the line of strike uh, then the dip angle so measured is apparent dip now this i have created in autocad uh, i created some bedding planes uh, in 3d so this these are the bedding planes 1 2 3 4 and 5 okay and consider an imaginary horizontal plane which is cutting them which have which has cut them horizontally and this is the strike direction okay this you see this direction will be the strike direction now obviously uh, what i said was the true dip will be the one which is perpendicular to your strike direction so i have drawn two lines here one line and the second line and uh, when we see them from top we will see them like this so this this line will represent a true dip and this line will represent an apparent dip so actually when you see from top if this if the line is perpendicular to the strike line that will be called as a true dip and if it is making any angle with the strike line for example this it will be called as an apparent dip and here the angle between the apparent dip and true dip is 10.61966 degrees so just uh, keep this in mind okay gamma is the angle between apparent and true dip so this angle will be called as gamma which is the angle between apparent dip and true dip next what i am doing is that i will be cutting this uh, this rock okay imaginary rock along true dip first like i'll be slicing it like a cake 
okay uh, consider this as a cake and this line this line of true dip as the line along which you will be cutting the cake okay so i'll be slicing it this way and it will look something like this okay and as i told you that dip angle is the uh, amount of angle which the bedding plane makes with the horizontal so this is the horizontal plane this entire plane is a horizontal plane and i am assuming the angle of uh, angle of this plane uh, this bed with the horizontal plane so what it is coming is 11.88866 degrees this angle will be called as the true dip angle okay so beta i will name this as beta it is the true dip angle just remember these uh, values will be required and obviously these values are just for this particular example for different examples there will be different values now what i will do after i cut it in this true dip direction i will now cut, slice it along the apparent dip direction like this along this direction and let's see what we get so we'll be getting some like this something like this right and the angle that we'll be measuring with the same bed and the horizontal plane that will be called as an apparent angle and you see what is the value here it is 11.69068 so alpha let us say i will name this as alpha it is the apparent dip angle and the value of this is 11.69068 degrees and the beta which was true dip angle it was 11.88866 degrees i think so if i am not wrong so this is true dip this is apparent dip what can you see you can see that true dip is greater than apparent dip okay and this is true for all the cases and you can you can say this as a general rule that true dip angle is the maximum angle that you can have maximum dip angle that you can have any any line which is not perpendicular to the strike line or any apparent dip at any angle will give you a value less than true dip always so true dip will give you the maximum dip angle any apparent dip other than true dip will give you always a value lesser than your true dip okay so this is one of the most important <coughs> points in this and there is a relation between these three values that is tan alpha is equal to tan beta into cos gamma so if you are having uh, the true dip value with you and if you are having and if you want to find what will be the apparent dip angle then you just need what is the angle of that apparent dip with respect to your true dip gamma is the angle between apparent and true dip right and in our case it was i think around 10.16 something something degrees i don't remember exactly the value but it was something around this so if i know gamma if i know beta can i not find alpha using this so this is a very important equation using which we can find apparent dip angle and true dip angle or or vice versa that way so if you know apparent dip and this angle you can find the true dip also now why does dipping of sedimentary bed take place first is there is a landform okay this is the first case that why dipping actually takes place why is the beds of the sedimentary layer uh, inclined so if the landform itself is inclined if the landform is like this then obviously whatever deposition is going to happen over that landform that will also be inclined or that will also be having a dip correct so dipping is the first reason of that is the landform itself on what the deposition is being taken place so based on this we have primary or depositional dips sedimentary rocks deposited in an originally inclined basin having slope not more than 5 to 20 degrees have a dip equal to that of the slope of the landform so if this is around 5 to 20 degrees this uh, inclination then the dip of this will also be almost equal to that landform secondary dips now the previous one was called as primary dips now this is secondary dips it is inclination induced in the beds of sedimentary rocks due to tectonic plate movements 
so we had seen this also previously how the tectonic plate so uh, collide with each other and you can see that there is a uh, inclination happening because of this so the inclination induced into the rocks because of the tectonic plate moments those will be called as secondary dips you see this uh, this example it is called as local or regional dip local or regional dips are inclination of the rocks which are present uh, which are exposed in a limited area of observation so you can see here that uh, the the first of all let me explain you what a regional dip is regional dip is the average inclination of series of formation over wider area so this theta you see this is the regional dip because it is an average dip of all these all these uh, local formations okay these local formations are averagely inclined at this particular angle and local dip is what local dip is these small small formations so as we had seen in the first case primary dip where the dip where the bed is they assume the angle of the local uh, local formation itself here what happens the local formation is having a dip of regional dip and sorry the the yeah the local landform is having the dip of regional dip and local formations on top of that have some different dips at different points so here the dip will be theta 1 here it will be theta 2 and at different points they will be different so this is called as a local or regional dip so this is it for today's lecture in the next lecture we will be starting with folds so till then take thank you